Yo guys, today we have a very unique guest. You know how passionate I am for yachting industry and there is a lot going on. Just stay tuned, watch till the end. You will amaze, I'm sure. Let's go. Good morning, sir. Please introduce yourself, who you are, what do you do for a living? I'm an Irishman by the name of uh, Trevor Miller and uh, I'm involved in the uh, sports coaching industry and uh, in specifically the sport of sailing. How did you start with that industry? <laughs> well, I was a sailor myself and um, I got noticed uh, because I one of the first coaching organizations back in Northern Ireland where I come from. I got offered a scholarship to go to the National Sailing Centre in England. So I worked there for two or three years, became the national coach for the United Kingdom. How long you are there in the industry? <laughs> so in the industry, it's over 40 years, but uh, my company, Sail Coach, it'll be celebrating its 30th anniversary in uh, September this year. Wow, congratulations yeah. and happy anniversary in advance. <laughs> so can you give us a little bit of insight because people don't know what the sailing coaching and mainly what do you do for solving some people's problem or what do you do in your business? Our main business, uh, which is uh, Sail Coach, we bring people from small countries around the world who don't have sort of access to high level coaching mm -hmm. uh, and training partners and we bring them together and they train with each other and they get coaching. Uh, most of them are, are sponsored by their sports councils, their national sports councils. Over the 30 years, we've uh, brought about 70 people to the Olympic Games and we've uh, uh, won four Olympic medals in, in the process. Are they competing under Malta country or UK, Ireland? Y yes, they all compete under their nationality. Mm -hmm. And we're just the organization that brings them together and gets them up to the standard required. What business model is it? Like how you are scaling it or how did you make a decision for you are going with this path? Because this is kind of a unique business we yeah. never heard and we never had any guests giving us interview like yeah. that. Well, if you break it down a little I, bit. I work for two national government bodies. And uh, so when you're working for a national body, you have to work with uh, the people that qualify in the system. Is that a profitable business? It goes up and down a bit, but uh, we try to uh, invest most of our uh, profits back into the business again. Mm -hmm. So we're not uh, so focused on the profit margins. We're more focused on uh, providing the service you know, and, and a high, high quality service. And we now have uh, two bases, one here in Malta and one in Spain, in uh, the city of Valencia. Okay, and can you give us a little bit insight uh, about the financial side <laughs> and what range you are at in the moment? Well, we have a turnover of about um, 300,000, mm -hmm. um, so it's not a bit huge business. And that spread, you know, over, you know, with athletes from, I would say, about uh, 10 to 15 countries. So you are thinking about expanding your business for different countries and also scale up your business in the financial side also, yeah? It, it sort of uh, happens naturally, you know, mm -hmm. we moved to Valencia and so that's, we've only been there two years, so, so that all needs a lot of effort put in uh, to that business now to get that more established. Mm -hmm. um, in Malta, it's a mature business. We've been in Malta for about 11 years. And um, and before that, we were in the south of France. Um, but, uh, you know, finding a, a cost base is, uh, is quite important, you know. Yeah. We moved from the south of France to Malta because the, the cost base was a lot lower. But, but now, you know, Malta is just the same as the south of France. And uh, so that advantage has, uh, has sort of gone. But, but now we're more familiar with Malta and we're happy here to, to stay and uh, provided uh, the costs of... Uh, the main cost for us is renting accommodation. I also want to talk a little bit about your yacht club uh -huh. and what you are doing with this club and how you are collaborating mainly. Yes, well, the, this yacht club is quite famous throughout the world uh, for the Rolex Middle Sea Race. Wow. And um, it has a very strong reputation. And now Sail Coach has, uh, has a partnership with the yacht club to manage the, the sailing school. Mm -hmm. And we've taken it over the last eight years from a startup business to now we have uh, sailors. These are small boat sailors 
regulars um, going all over the world to compete at the international regattas. So that journey has been um, been a very good uh, journey for us and the partnership with the Royal Malta Yacht Club has been a very successful one uh, for both sides, I think. We have on our channel, like we are interviewing yacht owners, yeah. boat owners yeah. and also club members. It's interesting to hear from you also. What do you think like a common traits of yacht owners because they're in, in the high class people and mm -hmm. they are millionaires, most of them, and how you are dealing with them or what's the common traits do they all have? Well, we all have uh, the sea in common. You know, yeah. and continue to grow, you know, uh, they need, need new blood. So we're at the bottom of the ladder where we're introducing people to the sport, mm -hmm. teaching them how to sail, uh, developing their skills and, uh, you know, giving them opportunities to compete internationally when they get better. Mm -hmm. And then eventually when they get older, they maybe go start crewing in, uh, on the bigger boats because uh, they're always looking for crews. And eventually when they get to an age where their bank account is more stable, then they buy boats themselves. So uh, it's a sport for life, yeah. you know, and uh, so you can have it from, uh, usually most people would start at the age around six or seven, mm -hmm. and you have it for the whole rest of your life. You know, you, you never get too old for it. So, and how old are you, you said? Me, my, my, myself, yeah. okay, I'm approaching 70, so uh, okay. I, I've been involved quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what keeps you motivated for continuing in that industry? What is your main motto? It's so wonderful to see young people, you know, getting so much out of the experience, you know, because it, you get a lot of life skills, because mm -hmm. when you're on the water, we work mostly with single-handed boats at this young age. And they are um, people who are, they're out there in the boat by themselves and they have to make decisions, you know, about where the wind is coming from, when the wind is changing, mm -hmm. uh, what type of wave state there is. Um, there's, you are making uh, decisions constantly about what to do. And um, so this uh, develops a lot of independence, you know, in young people and gives them a sense of responsibility. And, um, you know, and we find that most parents, you know, after they've been at the sailing school for a year or two years, you know, they notice quite a big difference in, in their child's uh, perception of the world and, uh, and decision making. I think like the younger generation who are joining to your sailing school, they have some mission that they want to be a successful person in the future in that industry or after a couple of years they are changing their career. Well, what well, do you think? Well, we're teaching them skills for life. Like most sports, when people get to their teens, there's a large dropout, mm -hmm. you know, because the other, lots of other things happen in life at, yeah. uh, when you become a towards the end of your teenage years um, but but a majority you know um, well maybe not a majority but a lot would stay with it and a lot would come back you know maybe in their 30s and and take it up again so they're not really lost but what, what we give people is we give them a lot of skills which will help them through their lives okay what kind of life skills you are nurturing them? Well, how to handle pressure, decision-making mm -hmm. skills, weigh up situations, you know, and make compromises, um, taking responsibility for something like a boat, Yeah. you know, and, and there's lots of things that can go wrong with boats, you know, so you need to be able to maintain it and manage it, um, you know, and those are all skills that, um, you know, fit into life. Um, with the two-man boats and the three-man boats, you know, you're learning people skills, you know, and you have to work as a team and, uh, and different things like that, you know. So you take away a lot of things, you know, from this sport. Yeah. Besides this business, do you have any other business you are diversifying or how? Uh, no, uh, we, we are pretty focused. We're a very specialized business yeah. in the company, particularly at the Olympic level of the business. I think there, I have enough on my plate at the minute. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Well, how can you break uh, we, we, we are probably diversifying is that we've opened now this second center in Spain. Yeah. You know, and so that's a challenge for us to make that work. But, uh, you know, we're, we're getting there. You know, the, the future is bright. Yeah, I believe so, eh? yeah. because the collaboration and also yeah. giving people opportunity to have their own yeah. freedom and yeah. that's what we needed. Yeah. But beside your business, how do you invest your money? Well, we invest it back into the business, you know, so we buy more boats. We, um, you know, we have just invested in, a, in an old farmhouse, which we are going to turn into a hostel, you know, for sailors. Ah, okay. Uh, um, farmhouse for... 
sailors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So because we're always renting, uh, mm -hmm. you know, properties for people to live in while they're with us. Yeah. And so we got the opportunity. Uh, this opportunity came along, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we we take that. So that's quite a big, you know, project, uh, like well over a million euros project. Wow. Right, right. So that quite a lot of our focus is on that at the moment. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. For people like me, let's say I want to start in yacht club business. I want yes. to have my own royal club. Yeah. What should I do from the beginning? What should I know? Because I also want to have my own boats, my yachts and having my own club, royal club. What advice you would give to me? That's not really my expertise, you know, because my expertise is, is running a coaching business. Mm -hmm. It's not running the yacht club. Um, but, you know, most of these royal yacht clubs, there's a long tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, but just talking off the top of my head, you know, first of all, you need to get a very good site uh, beside the sea. Yeah. You know, if there is a marina involved, you know, uh, then, you know, that's even better. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, you know, and basically you're, you're running a, an entertainment business, you know, for, uh, for most of it. You know, you're providing a service to members, ah. uh, like both in providing the marina services and uh, and the uh, onshore services like uh, catering and you know making it pleasant for uh, your members to want to join the club and uh, and to be part of something so yeah. that's interesting and this is you said entertainment quite sure what the buzzwords are for it's certainly running uh, a lot of it is running a, a catering company mm -hmm. yeah so that makes sense at the end i just want to now some insight from you and pick up something from your minds for people want to be successful and people want to be a business owner to have their mindset in these years what advice you would give to them well you have to be prepared to dedicate a lot of your life to your business you know it's almost like getting married or having a child you know uh, if you leave it then it's going to die and if you keep working with it and developing it then you have something very nice at yeah. the end you know so um, you know it's a big commitment running your own business and particularly if you're used to working for someone else with set hours and things like that then you know you need to think quite hard before you do it but you get a lot of pleasure out of it when it works good to know and you are more than 30 years in the business yes yeah what is the longevity secret of running your business more than 30 years because a lot of people are starting their business or they have some procrastination they are not starting just thinking over and over but then the idea is dying out so what would you do um, well for me like I've always it's been my passion mm -hmm. you know so I have a passion for, for this business and the passion hasn't really faded yeah um, so, so that's not really my problem now is uh, succession um, as to say I'm almost 70 mm -hmm. it's maybe time to stand back a little bit more and let the next generation take it over yeah and so I'm trying to uh, sort of manage that succession at the moment to um, so it carries on beyond uh, beyond myself nice advice and thank you very much for yeah. your time okay, and pleasure. people want to collaborate with you they can reach out to you uh, you have any social media or any yeah we website? have quite a lot of social media channels yeah I'll give you my business card and sure you can so thank you very much. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. I see you in the next video. Bye.